Shout out to G-Man Boxing. All right, so Lawrence Akali knocks out Christoph Glowacki in the sixth round. This was a one-sided fight. This fight went exactly as I anticipated. I didn't do a prediction video for this fight, but I could not. I think you can say, see on my live streams, I couldn't see it going any other way than Lawrence Akali winning this fight by knockout. I really couldn't. Um, you always get the feeling when you look at a fight, especially for a world title against someone like Christoph Glowacki, you always get the impression that maybe there's something could happen. I never got that feeling for this fight, never once, and... What I thought would happen is exactly what happened. Lawrence Akali just used his height and reach. He is so big for a cruiserweight. So long, so lanky. His arm length is incredible for a cruiserweight. And when you take someone who's six foot one, like uh, Christoph Glavacki, with a much shorter reach, he has to try and get inside. All right? Now, he's fought guys who are you know bigger than him by a couple of inches, who would probably outreach him by a couple of inches, but not to this level. See, it's, a very, it's very tricky you know, to come across someone like Lawrence Akali, especially now that he's boxing under Shane McGuigan, where he is a lot more patient, where he is using the jab to good effect. And he was using the jab to great effect in this fight. The feints were on point from early on. You know, it was really... Since he's been under Shane McGuigan, I have to say, Akali has really impressed me an awful lot. Early on in Lawrence Akali's career, I was really, really, really sceptical about him. You know, I saw a lanky cruiserweight who really didn't know what he was about who would clinch excessively, who would use his physical advantages, which he should, you know, if you have the height and reach, use it. But he would also use his physical advantages to fight dirty, i.e. Isaac Chamberlain and Matty Askin. They were fights where, certainly the Matty Askin fight, he should have been disqualified for the amount of holding he was doing, you know, not wanting to engage, etc., etc. Now, he's understanding, especially on the Chamber weekend, that he can use his height and reach, that these fighters have to come to him. And whilst they can come to him and you know they can try and pressure him, they have to get by A, the long reach, the powerful jab, the uppercut that he throws, and the right hand. Lawrence O'Colley is a very powerful fighter. So you've got a very, very dangerous package there as a cruiserweight. Now that he's a bit more refined, you definitely see the potential he has and how good he is. He's going to be very hard to beat a cruiserweight. As for him, because the top of him moved to heavyweight, as for him a heavyweight, that's a different kettle of fish altogether. Um... If I want, if you want me to make a prediction now, based upon what I've seen from Lawrence O'Colley at cruiserweight, and what I've seen from him in the amateurs, how he would do at heavyweight, he gets lifted off the ground as a heavyweight. But as a cruiserweight, he has such a height and reach advantage over most of these guys that it's going to be very difficult for anyone to beat him. Seriously, it's going to be very difficult. Um, Myris Breedis is only about six foot. Myris Breedis against him, which will be unification, will be a good fight. Who else is there? It's Maris Breedis. Who else is there? Oh, Mike, um, not Mike Perez. Elunga Makabu. Again, um, possible unification there. I would make Lawrence Akali favourite over Elunga Makabu. Breedis is very good. So Breedis, I don't know. But if he's planning on unifying and he tries to unify with someone like Makabu, Makabu is very much improved since the last Tony Bellew. But I would still make Akali favourite. At, at, at cruiserweight, 200 pounds. The guy's a problem, serious problem. With that height and reach, that power, that awkwardness, he's a problem for all cruiserweights. As I said, he's not moved to the heavyweight yet, but when he does, his, his advantage as a cruiserweight are that he is bigger, stronger than everyone else. Take that away, and it's going to be interesting. Very interesting. Um, I've seen him get starts in the amateurs by Erislandi Savon, and I've seen him get dropped several times in Rio. He fought Savon again, actually, he was dropped several. So I do question the bit of fragility there about a collie. A cruiserweight, I don't think anyone can touch his chin. But a heavyweight, it'd be interesting to see how, how it holds up. So um, when he moves to heavyweight, that'll be interesting. A cruiserweight, I, I, it's going to be tough to beat this guy. And what I mean by that, it's not just the fact he uses height and reach. The feints he does, like the feints from early on were very, very good from a collie. You know, the movement he shows is very good. You know, just nice and straightforward nice and patient you know just throwing the jab moving around the ring all that is very good for mccauley so at cruiserweight he is going to be a massive massive problem fight went as i anticipated it was a right hand in the sixth round um christoph glowacki you know he came in full of confidence by the end i think he knew that this guy was just, it was it was inevitable if he wanted to win this fight he was going to have to grab the the bull by the horn so to speak but the bull was always going to pounce before him 
So that's just the way it went. Credit to Lawrence Akali to do this in 16 fights with a very limited amateur career. Very, very impressive. You know, it has to be said. We need to see who he fights next. And we need to see what he does um, with respective weight divisions. As I said, a cruiserweight is going to be a problem. A heavyweight, that's a different that's a different situation. That's a different scenario altogether. All right? We need to wait and see how that goes. Good fight, you know. Well, I was a good fight, you know. It was a one-sided fight, but it was good what he did in the fight. You know, I give the guy all the credit in the world. We need to see how he gets on, as I said. I'm going to leave it here. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section of Cruiserweight. Do you see anyone beating Nikali? Are you like me thinking if and when he moves with the heavyweight? It's going to be a very, very, very different kettle of fish altogether. Let me know in the comment section. Hope you liked the video. Smash the like button if you did. Subscribe, of course, if you are new. Hashtag GMAZRocks. All that good stuff, lads and lassies. I will talk to you. Peace.